over the last 40 years or so that I've been a futurologist, I've never tried to predict politics or talk about political movements. The reason is that I have long regarded them as products of the zeitgeist, something that can't be predicted. But recently there's been a big change. There's actually a new divide in society, a new schism. And instead of left-wing socialism and right-wing conservatism, we've actually got a completely new sort of two-class politics. On one side, you've got a group of people who kind of feel rooted where they are. They have a strong sense of local identity. On the other side, you've got a more liberal, techno-elite class who actually feel mobile, who feel capable and confident in their skills, and they embrace the world and embrace, embrace multiculturalism. These two sides have seemed absolutely at each other's throats in the last few years. First, when the UK decided to vote to leave the EU, I thought that was an aberration just the people expressing their anger at the government. But when Donald Trump was elected in the USA, I thought something far more profound was going on. And I now actually think we have a new form of politics between a populist group who feel strongly about national and local identity and a liberal international group who want multiculturalism. These two sides are colliding in our politics today. Over the last few years, populist political parties have more than tripled their support in European politics. Populist leaders are now in government posts in 11 European countries. And one in four Europeans are currently voting for populist political candidates. In his new book, The Road to Somewhere, political commentator David Goodhart has identified these two new tribal identities as the somewheres and the anywheres. These terms are thinly veiled euphemisms to describe one social class which has been left behind by progress and another class which feels confident that it has high level portable skills which allow members of this class to work almost anywhere. Goodhart describes the anger of the deeply rooted somewheres as a reaction to a feeling of being left behind by an increasingly well-educated, technical and mobile social elite. And as the historian Yuval Harari has observed in his best-selling book 21 Questions for the 21st Century, ordinary people may not understand artificial intelligence and biotechnology, but they can sense that the future is passing them by. The noted economist Professor Sir Paul Collier of Oxford University has also identified the emergence of this new social divide. In his recent book, The Future of Capitalism, he writes, There is not much doubt that our societies have polarised into those earning above average incomes who have jettisoned national identity in favour of their job and those lower down society who have clung to it. How will these new political forces play out? Well, in the next 15 or 20 years, as more and more digital disruption arrives, I think it's likely that the populist vote will grow. I think it's likely that there will be more demands for strong leaders to solve this perceived problems. In the longer run, though, I think that the older populace, those without the education, will naturally die off. And as a result of that, we're likely to see more balance returning to politics. Thank you